Hello and welcome to Beyond Equestria. This week's guest is Lee Tokar, one of the founding members of the website FanBuilt. How are we doing today, Lee? I'm doing just fine. I am the founding member. It was my it was my idea. Oh, excellent. I, I built it out of my own little brain. Lee has come on today to talk about his fan built website along with a little bit about his career and himself. So uh, without further ado, we'll get right into the questions. My first question I have here for you today is when did you become interested in acting? We'll start with that. Uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to grow up to be a cartoon, but I didn't know what that meant. I was five years old. and um, But I've always been, since I was six years old, I started doing talent shows and little, you know, little things that I would just find out about and my parents would put me in and people would hear about me doing silly voices and so I'd just end up doing silly voices in front of big groups of people and doing Kermit the Frog and of course it was a five, six year old boy doing Kermit the Frog so it was hey, Kermit the Frog is way up here so mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it wasn't the real like hey go Kermit the Frog here it was hey go Kermit the Frog here so <laughs> and uh, and Bugs Bunny but Bugs Bunny as a six year old was Bugs Bunny so, you know, so I started doing that and telling silly jokes and I, I kept doing that. And I won a, I won in grade um, dun, 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 four, I won a public speaking award for my district on the, um, on, it was about horror movies, I remember. Like, I'm here to talk to you about horror movies. Yes, horror movies. Those dastardly things that keep you up to all hours of the night to watch. And what for? To scare yourself silly. That's right. I said silly. That was, I remember it to this day. The first <laughs> opening. I don't remember what happened after that, but I remember the opening line. And I, and, and I was like standing, walking around, just like shaking my finger. That's right. I said silly. <laughs> and, it was, and I was in grade four when I did that. And then I just started doing stand up as soon as I was in, and when I was in high school, I started doing stand up and I, I did a little bit of writing for the backstage dinner theater and then I started performing for them and then I became their head director and then as soon and I was then I became the host and MC of uh Punchlines in Kelowna which was at um which was at uh held at Flashbacks in Kelowna and I was their head MC until the day ap- the, until the day before I graduated and my last performance was for the Downtown Businessmen's Association on the day that I graduated with my cap and gown. I went from my ceremony to do, to perform that. And I was on the bus to Vancouver the next day to prefer to pursue my my career as a as a voice actor. Wow. Was that a college graduation or was that your high school graduation? High school graduation. No. Okay. Yeah. High school. I was right out of high school. And I'm like, I'm going to go be a cartoon. Have you ever gone to college for voice acting or any any kind of acting related stuff? No, I mean, in high school, I did, you know, just the standard. I did a couple of plays. I did names and nicknames. I played Grandpa Thorntree and then, and, um, Mama, Mama's something, Mama, something. You can't take it with you. Was it you can't take it with you? Yeah. And, uh, I think it was you can't take it with you. And I played, uh, Mr. Wyatt. Why am I remembering all these names? <laughs> That's pretty impressive. It's really good. I, I, I haven't talked to anybody about my high school stuff or anything. No, I don't have a lot of training. I just always have done performing and, you know, after performing for years and years and years, like 15 years of stand up comedy um, that, you know, you kind of you learn, you sort of learn by by doing, not by, you know, by learning from others. Now that you have been a cartoon, do you enjoy doing children's television more so than like adult entertainment or doing dubs and that sort of stuff? No, I don't like children. (laughs) <laughs> I'm kidding. I love children. Of course I do. This is my dream job. I have the best job in the whole world. Um, and like doing cartoon stuff uh, is it's what I've always wanted to do. I get to be silly with silly people. What better fun is that? As a silly person myself, I mean, I think I'd probably I would probably implode or explode with silliness one day if I just kept it all bottled up. I just become I just run down the street waving my arms like Kermit the Frog and making stupid noises all at once. It would all come out at once. And then I'd be thrown into a padded room with pudding and a nice big window and and some restraints and a little rocking chair to keep me company. (laughs) What other mediums have you acted in? Have you done anime dubs? Have you done video games? Yeah, I've done video games. I was in Hulk World or Hulk Planet and... uh, 
um, Warhammer 40K, and I've done a lot of stuff. I don't do those much more because they trash my voice. I've done lots of anime. There's, um, you know, I was in, uh, I had some small parts in Death Note, and I had some small, I was the first guy that got killed in Death Note, Shibuya Maru. He was the, the guy on the motorcycle who did that terrible thing. Really? Yeah. And I played one of the Death Notes, and, and, uh, I was in, of course, Mega Man. I was Higsby, and, um, and, uh, Vile. And, uh, I was, um, yeah, I've done lots. I've done lots. Um, uh, there's one that I'm in right now that I'm not supposed to say, so I'm not going to say, but when I'm allowed to announce it, everybody that loves anime will go like, Oh my God. And then <laughs> yeah, there, I'm, there's going to the, the world of, of geekdom will, 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 will squee all at once. <laughs> Do you have any advice to others who are looking into starting into voice acting? Yeah, find out who's – well, the, my, my dad gave me some really good advice. When I came back to, to Kelowna, he just showed up on his doorstep, and I'm like, Dad, I need some advice. I feel kind of lost right now. And, I, you know, when I was just starting out, it was really a tough go. I mean, you go to a audition, a, a audition after audition, and nobody knows. I mean, I knew that I was talented. I knew that I could do all these voices. But you can't just, like, stand up and say, hey, I could do this. Because they're going to be like, hey, sit down. There's a protocol. You know, who do you think you are? So, <laughs> so you know, and my dad said, find out who's doing what it is you want to do and find out how they got there. Find out how they did it. And that's the best advice I can think of giving was the best advice he gave me. Would the current day be a good time to get into voice acting? Or should people wait, maybe work on their education, work on some other side theatrical fields? Are you saying whether the market will bear more voice actors? Of course, there's always room for more um, until it encroaches on um, my jobs. And then I say, yeah, just stay home. Or- <laughs> 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 All right. That's great advice. I think we're going to put the voice acting stuff for aside for now. We'll start talking a little bit about your writing because okay. you, you are also a writer. Yes. What do you enjoy about writing, particularly theatrical pieces? Uh, I really like the fact that it's uh, it's a quiet, solemn kind of thing, and I I like to there's a I have a tra- I have sort of a tradition that I do, and I like to I like to set up my room a certain way, and I have like it depends on what I'm writing. If I'm writing comedy, then I like to be at a certain place, and if I'm writing like it depends on what I'm writing. But I do I like the fact that you can create worlds in your mind and walk through them, and you you're the master of that world. You are playing like a, a demigod at that point, where you get to you know it's like it's like lucid dreaming. I used to have lucid dreams where I could make things in my dreams. I could move things, mountains. I could fly and all these things. And it's like lucid dreaming, but you're awake and you're there. It's just you and a pen or you and your tablet or you and your computer. And I like sitting there and making myself laugh or making, or or just coming up with making myself cry or making myself like emoting through the characters that I'm creating. It's a very powerful thing. I, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for, for, uh, for people getting involved in writing and, and, paying homage to the writers that have come before me. Did you start writing with your stand-up, or how did that start? Yeah, that's really where it started. I was writing my routines first, and then I started writing for stage uh, at this back alley uh, theater, a uh, backstage dinner theater, sorry, and then I won a BC Playwright competition in 1988, by just out of the blue. I just wrote it with, uh, yeah, and, I, and it was performed here in Vancouver, and I came up here and and watched it, and I stayed at uh, at the, the lead actress's place and her husband Donnelly Rhodes Henry, who played the doctor in Danger Bay, and but and 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 going back further, he played Dutch in the in the old sitcom Soap. Huh. Yeah, so we stayed with them in this beautiful mansion in Deep Cove, and I was like, oh my God, what the heck is happening? Because I was just a kid. I was taking a year off of high school to uh, to because I was being um well i was being flown around bc to to paint murals for kelly o'brien's restaurant so they were i, I did them in Kelowna and kamloops and vernon and penticton and prince george and everywhere and they would fly me around and during the, the creation the renovation or the building of their new restaurants the restaurant chain they would have me come in and, and i would paint all their walls with 
with Irish themed um, pastoral settings and leprechauns and rainbows and pots of gold. So I had to take a year off of school, actually. So while I was taking a year off, I heard about the BC Playwright Competition and I I just started dashing off some stuff and I, I wrote a play in just a little while and, and lo and behold, I won first place. So they flew me out here and I got to sit. I felt like a little superstar. Before I even moved here, so I, I, I like, uh, yeah, I, don't, I can't remember the question anymore because I'm, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still waking up. I'm sorry, I'm just rambling. Well, that's absolutely fine. I just wanted to ask you before we moved on: is has writing helped you with your other professions and your other hobbies that you like to work on? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a very cross-platform artist. I paint, I sculpt, I draw, I illustrate. Um, I perform, uh, I, I write, and they are all in my mind. They are all the same thing. They're all, they're all uh, one and the same. To me, there, there is no distinguishing thing between them. They're all sort of connected, which, which is why I built FanBuilt, because I want to bring together all of those disciplines. Um, and, yeah, so I, 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 it is, writing is as important as performing, is as important as art. It's um, expression. I'm I'm an advocate of artistic expression. I like people that do it. I like to support people who do it. I like to give money to young groups who want to do it. If I have enough money, I have been a, a supporter of the arts and a patron of the arts when I when I've been allowed to financially find that freedom. But uh, yeah, it's all. I love it all. I love it all. All oh, more. Give me more art, art, art. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now for a different kind of writing. You've written a children's book, correct? I've written several. We're we're still in the process of pursuing all of it. But I'm I if, I, I want to preface all of this with uh, one thing. Over the years, I have started many projects, and I've allowed myself to grow very organically. And I've gone back and changed certain things. And now it just seems that at this time in my life, you know, forty something. They are all sort of, they are all, almost all of them are done. Like they're really getting to a point where all of them, I've, I've, I've finessed all of them. And as my, I've changed my styles, I've gone back and retooled things. So I have many books. I have one called The Last Smile in Dullsville, which I've written and voiced and produced, uh, and, and edited. So that is going to be out on iTunes soon. And, uh, and I'm going to, tr- and, and I also have one called Billy Brain Rain's Nighttime Alphabet, which is, which I'm, uh, which is now just the nighttime alphabet is a picture book. So that's another incarnation of it. And my publicist and writing agent, Rachel Sanchez from Gal Friday publicity. Hi, Rachel. Um, she is, uh, she is de- uh, at this point, uh, looking at getting Random House and a couple of, and Penguin. They're all looking at it. And now that I've, now that I've been nominated for an Emmy, they're like, hey, you know that thing that we threw out? What? Where is that thing again? Where's that manuscript that we threw out? I think maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that everything's, um, so there's a series of Billy Brain Rains. Billy Brain Rains Nighttime Alphabet, Billy Brain Rain and the Incredible Everywhere Rope, Billy Brain Rain and the Super Secret Staircase, and Billy Brain Rain and, um, the Government Cover Up Toy Closet. So there's a whole series of them, and, um, so yeah, I have, I have loads and loads of things. And they're all sort of happening at the same time. And I'm also writing a movie. And that is almost finished. I've been working with, uh, I wrote a first draft of it. And, uh, and it was very long. And because I'm, I'm still learning how to write f- full feature films, it's called The Grim Possession of Chesterfield Couch. And it's a very dark comedy. It's very, well, it's a very dark sort of, um, kind of more adult themed Harry Potter kind of thing. It's a little darker, but very, uh-huh. very silly though. So um, it's very dark humor, and I was, I'm now working with uh, an editor from. Uh, he's a reader and a writer for Telefilm, and uh, he his name is Michael Giampa in Victoria, and he's he's a prof at UVic, great guy, and he has taken it and retooled it, and he's about a week away from finishing it, and I've given him way too much money, but he is he's promised that in about a week from now the first draft will be done and then we're gonna go back and forth until we get the third draft and I want to be I want to have the third draft finished and and in the mail to some people I know in Los Angeles uh by Halloween. So that's that's my goal. 
So will we be able to expect maybe some kind of theatrical release in the States in the future? Or? Yes. In the world, I'd like, I'd love, I was like a worldwide theatrical release, but, um, yeah, the people that I'm, that I'm going to be giving this to are, um, they, they do these kind of things, like Harry Potter's. So, <clears throat> I, I can't mention names. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. It's going to be, I'm, I'm hoping that if, if it, if it's as good, I think it's, a, it's, it's some of my best writing and it's a very, it's a very, very, um, yeah, there's actually, if you go onto Fanbelt website, there is a competition that's coming up and it's the Grim Possession competition and we're looking for designs for the Grim and we're going to have a competition and I'm going to pay people to design what they think a giant elf, elven wizard would look like. Uh, and I, I, I give a description and I give a little clip. Um, I think it's up there right now. If it's not there, it will be when I, when we finish our contest pages. We can't accept any submissions until we get our contracts from legal, uh, from my lawyer, who also owns most of my money. So, <laughs> but yeah, so everything's all happening at the same time. I know I'm talking a lot and I know it seems that I'm talking a lot about myself, but I have a lot of things on the go right now and I need to disseminate and I need to tell people about it. Otherwise, nobody will come and play with me. So that would, be, that would be rather embarrassing. You know, I built this great, I built this beautiful sandbox and nobody's, nobody's come to play. I've got all these shovels and I've got all, my, all the buckets and shovels. <laughs> well, hopefully we can fix some of that or at least uh, get people a little bit more informed about what the website is. But first, I want to finally get into kind of my final topic among your artistic passions. <laughs> You're an artist. What kind of art do you draw? I, I illustrate silly things. I am a designer of, I'm a character designer, um, and I'm an illustrator. Aside from that, my, my larger scale paintings, I do, uh, some pastoral, some, some impression, I do impressionist, uh, impressionistic pastorals, um, monochromatics, like blues, I stick to one color, purples or blues, um, very kind of Monet thing, but the, but then I have another style. Uh, which is one of my favorites, and that is, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I love surrealism. Oh. And, uh, yeah, surrealism, like, uh, it's one of my, my like, like Magritte, surrealist. Um, but, uh, but some of my favorite ones is, I'm trying to remember some of the names of, now that, see, now I've got all these names out of my head now, now I'm feeling stupid again. Um, oh, oh my goodness, so embarrassing, I met the man. Oh, gallery in Maui. Oh, oh well, I'm an idiot. Anyway, there's I do have I do have a, there's a lot of people. I love surrealist art. I love when people can make your mind think that it's seeing one thing, but it gives you sort of a sense of dream. It's like it's like reality, but it's reality of a dream. So I I like any I like stuff like that, and I like fantasy art as well. I must admit. How do you find time to fit all of? the different things that you do is since you know obviously you're you're an artist writer voice actor i know and, <laughs> and now been, now I entrepreneur in eight cartoons i mean i can't i don't know. well on the bottom when i sign my emails usually i will sign lee bracket sleep is for babies and bracket tokar so, <laughs> <laughs> and that's sort of my moniker that's like lee sleep is for babies tokar because i don't sleep i'm an insomniac and i i'm a bit manic and if I'm not covered in soapstone dust or splatters of paint, I'm hunkered down over a computer giggling maniacally to myself, creating little funny things and, or, um, and now this year being a CEO of a company and that's been expensive, but, um, <laughs> challenging as well. Cause I, I, I'm an artist and I never had to think of art as a business, but in, ultimately you have to. Am I boring? This is kind of dry. Oh. I'm usually much, I'm usually much more, you know, pop, 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 I'm usually a little bit more sillier, but it's, uh, it's morning still. So it's just early afternoon and I'm, I'm not quite awake yet. I was it's, a, it, it's also a Gended interview and I'm, I'm typically, I take my format from the great set NPR. My own personal interview style is very, very dry, very informative. Oh, I like that. Okay, good. Then I'm right on cue. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say that you're boring or NPR. No, no, is boring, no, 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 no. But... Just, a, just a little bit boring, a little bit dry. That's me right now. There it is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that's good. That's good to know that I'm fitting into your format. I'm kind of, I'm kind of matching your, your pattern. I think if you would, if you would have, 
approached it sillier, I probably would have raised it up to your level. But uh, I, I like this. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's, it's, it feels right. It feels, it feels good. It feels good. Let's actually start talking a bit about the fan build site. What possessed you to become an entrepreneur? Why make a website? Well, originally, because I have so many projects, I wanted to create a space where I could have people come and help me to finish my projects. Like, like, like this grim possession. I wanted somebody to help me come up with some designs because I wanted, I wanted to get involved. I want other people to get involved and I wanted to just go and play. Like I could, I've, I have designs of my, of my own for the grim that I really like, but I want to see what other people can do. Uh, so I had all these projects and I really wanted to, like for the last smile in Dullesville, what does an ancient race of smilers look like? So I had all of these things. And then I thought to myself, and then, and we did a vlog, we did a, 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 a podcast and it's on the web. And, uh, and then I thought to myself, you know, like, a, I don't know what possessed me, but I was like, well, what, why am I being so selfish? There's a lot of people that probably want to do the same thing and they want to get in touch with other artists who want to create things and they would pay other people to compete and to come up with things. And, and then I thought, well, what if they want to collaborate on stuff together? Then I should give them a forum to do that. And then I thought, oh my gosh, this thing could be huge. What if all artists around the world just, I just build this space where they could come together, collaborate, and it's like competition based. And then I thought, well, what if I, what if I take the best of those things and make a show out of it? Cause I know all these producers. And then my head exploded and then I passed out and I woke up a couple of days later and the whole idea was fully formed in my head. And I woke up next to like a half a foot high stack of, of scribbles and, and notes and and empty Red Bull cans scattered around the room. And <laughs> I was like, OK, let's do this. This is awesome. <laughs> So I started talking to people and I got some people involved that, uh, from, for, from advisors. I t- started talking to a group of, of animation advisors from, uh, formerly, well, f- uh, from studio, studio B, now DHX. Uh, I talked to, uh, Ace Fitke from Nerdcore. Um, and I explained it to him and he said, you know, he, he told me and afterwards we went up for wine. Uh, before a Christmas party, his Christmas party last year, and he said that uh, that if if he if he likes the idea enough, he'd like to buy it. And now I I just don't think I could sell it because I just love it, and I I want to I want to see what it can become first. When my staff and I get together, we kind of feel like you know we're we're sitting in the garage before the building of IBM or or you know stuff. We kind of feel like we're at the beginning of Facebook or something. I know it's kind of lofty, but you know. Bigger stuff has started from smaller ideas, as far as I'm concerned. What kind of challenges have you faced as a small business person just trying to get well, things started? Well, I've been very fortunate because I am in so many cartoons that it affords me the ability, the luxury of being able to, to staff. So I can actually pay people because I, I have a mo- I do not like people to work for free. I don't want people to give me art for free. I don't want people to do writing for free. I don't want people like I'm a, I have a marketing guy and a COO. I pay them. Out of pocket, I have a designer, Chloe Windus. Reese Haynes is my COO and marketer. Scott Turrell is my IT guy. Um, we have a new uh, Michael uh, is coming on board. I'm not sure his last name. I have not met him yet. He, we have a programming requirement, um, and uh, we are going to be paying him like a stupid amount of money to get the coding for this one other thing that we need. <laughs> uh, so we're still in the we're still in the beta testing. Amy Rainey from Australia. She is. Uh, she's on board as, as one of my moderators for the Skype chat, which is the fan built fans Skype chat, which is between two and 20 strong, up to 80, 80 members, I think, but Skype only holds 10 or 12 at a time. And that happens every day. There's people every day talking about fan built and putting ideas together and great things. And, um, and we have a couple other people that are moderating and some people that want to come on board that we're just waiting. We are still in beta. We've been working out most of the glitches. We still have a couple more things to retool and a couple more things to make seamless and a couple more design things that we need, but we're still in beta and we, we wanted, we only wanted like 12 people in our beta test. And we, and without telling anybody, I've gone to two conventions and I've mentioned it. I've had two panels. Uh, and without doing any other advertising other than that, we are now, I don't know, yesterday we were at 420 original subscribers, hundreds and hundreds of pictures, 
dozens and dozens of original video content, uh, songs. We haven't even hit the, the, the voiceover people yet. We haven't even done that. Jody Quine is a beautiful young artist, a, a, a songwriter and guitarist. Uh, she's been on Billboard and I just gave her a signing fee to help me, uh, gather up all of her musician friends from around the world. She was in LA for a long time and now she's located here. So we're, we're, we haven't, we haven't even scratched the surface and we already have enough content for, for a show and we're going to just keep pumping these shows out. And I can't tell you how much, I mean, how grateful I am for all the people that have helped out. Like it's, it just seems to be growing I, I, without me. I'm not even doing, I'm just, I'm just doing CEO stuff. I'm not, I'm just, I just built this thing. I'm like, my my staff come over so so the big challenge get to getting back to your question is the money and a young entrepreneur you need you need startup capital i didn't have a, a we were we were waiting for a long time for an investor it fell through it still might be back on i'm not sure because when it fell through i think everybody was expecting it to fail but i kept pumping my own money into it and i'm at about ninety thousand dollars in to this project mm -hmm. And, uh, and quite, and I would do it again. You know, I would do it because this is what, this is my dream. And I want to build this thing where all these artists can come together. Um, cause that's, that would be amazing. Cause I just, I see it in my head and I, I, I know that it, it's manifest destiny, man. You, just, you see a thing, you make a thing and then you make it happen. But, um, I have, I've been, lux I, I've had luxury of, of being able to afford the staff. Cause if you don't, if you don't have that, then you can't actualize your dreams. Okay. So, what exactly is FanBelt? What is it going to do? What should people expect when they come to your website? Okay, I actually have this in a. Let me see if I can find it here, because it's better. It's better if I just say it that as it's written instead of trying to reinvent the wheel here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what this is what our marketing thing. This is one of our marketing things. Um, we aim to bring multidisciplinary artists together to create, collaborate, and complete original content. FanBuild aims to become the stage upon which our community of brilliant minds may share their art and dreams with the world. Our goal to become the worldwide FanBuild network. And that's what we want to become our own network. And that's, that's the end result. Okay. So now do you believe that being sociable, having a lot of social interaction, making connections, is that important for people within the creative community to do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so often artists are, I, I, I know there are a lot of reclusive artists that like to keep to themselves, but more often than not, I mean, people are stuck behind these barriers of desktop computers and they just want to reach out and connect with other people and, and what, and it's, and it's fun and it's, and they get paid and they get exposure and it's harder and harder with the growing population and everybody's scrambling to the top of their own little pile of poop that it's hard to, it's hard to get noticed and recognized. And so what we're doing is providing them an immediate access from their desktop computers or from their paintbrushes and scanners through the computers, uh, to, to be part of, uh, just kind of a guerrilla network that's just we're just we don't have we're not exclusive we're not exclusionary we're not the old guards are dead man the the old broadcasters they, they still have they're still a going concern but the the trees are still standing but they're petrified you know that that model is is failing so television in its in the in the format that it was in is not I don't think it's going to be a, a going concern for much longer there is there is it, it has to change in, in accordance with uh, mobile devices and and the uh, it's got to change and so I think that fan built is part of that change I think this is the next evolution of of getting people out there in the world what have your coworkers and colleagues thought about you becoming an entrepreneur and d doing fan built being the CEO uh, my my colleagues in in fan built or my colleagues outside of fan built in my voice community and other things let's do the outside of fan built I think everybody sort of just they've seen, they've they've heard so much about it for the last couple of years and finally it's I mean we had a couple of really false starts I was with another team before and uh it didn't work out quite the way I wanted it to and so we had to change our tactics and we we were we were going with they, that other group was busy doing their own thing and I really wanted to concentrate a concentrated group so 
Um, we parted ways amicably and we had to restart everything again. So the old website that was up there ended as of April 1st last year. So there's been a lot of false starts. So Fanbuilt in its first, in its second incarnation, that's only six months old. We're only six months old. We built then designed and crafted and tooled and programmed this website from, from scratch in six months. So from April 1st, to the first month, there was nothing done but planning. So really five months of actual part-time work from three very dedicated people. And, uh, they, I think my colleagues just, they're just kind of hoping the best for me because I've been talking about it so much of my, I feel kind of like my bum is hanging up over a cold fence and life could come and kick it off any minute. So <laughs> I think everybody just wants the best for me and they're hoping with their fingers crossed and, um, they're just like, oh, there's Lee doing that fan build thing again. I hope the best. He sure talks about it enough. It could go very, very wrong, you know, because I've told a lot of people. I mean, it, it, you know, it would be really embarrassing if nobody came. But I already have 420 people. So even if that's all I get that I haven't even advertised, I'm happy. I can, I can work with that group. Those 420 people, what's been their kind of response to the site? Oh, what do they think about it? And it's so fantastic. Like the, the, they've written fan built theme songs. They've, they've done little snippets of animation already. They've uploaded their demo tapes. We've got, we've gone to a couple animation grad schools and we've got, we're collecting grad reels. So we're going to have a special section just for that. But we've got people like there's, uh, Jason Fry is a young man from Vegas, Las Vegas. And he has gone to his school. This is very exciting news. He's gone to his school and convinced the school to allow it to use fan built as through, as their artistic format. For their for their for their classmate their artistic classmates in their art programs to collaborate together. Is that the University of Las Vegas I out there? It, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay. But anyway, it's Jason Fry. I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm not, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, I don't have the school name in front of me. And they promised that they will do it again next year. And Jason's very excited, and I'm very excited for him. And I'm very thankful to him. And we're going to make him one of our featured fan built fans of the of the week once we get our once we actually do our official launch. What can we expect from FanBuild in the future? Uh, well, I think what we're aiming for, one, if we get some financing together, and even if we don't, what I'm aiming for is 100,000 members within a year and a half. That's my goal. Okay. I'd like to get at least 30,000 in every six months. So, Is there a full release date planned to get out of beta? Uh, no, we are not, we're not going to announce anything yet. We know what we have to do. We've got a very lengthy list of, of things that we have to build and, and, uh, components that we have to implement in order for it to, to be user friendly for the, for the a a artists that want to find each other. We have to do some internal SEO things for search engine optimization so we, so they can find each other. And I also want to do, um, I want to get a small core group of beta testers that are that are just producers in the animation and movie industry from L L.A. to New York, Toronto and here in Vancouver. And I want to sit them down and I want them to look at the site and say, how would you search for talent? Because all of my producer friends are like, man, this is great. You're going to have all these artists, all these voice actors, all these actors, all these other kinds of multidisciplinary people in one place. It, it's like because they have to travel all over the world to get to these th people. But I'm bringing like they have to go to Nappy, Mythcom. They got to go to this cons in the south of France. They got to go to to Ottawa to the animation festival there to Las Vegas to, for the for the, the big uh, thing there to L.A. They've got to go to these conventions where artists get together and show off their wares. This way, they don't have to go anywhere if they don't want to. They can they can find and search through our engines and through our. They can search for artists right here, right on FanBuild. So I'm going to get those people together and say, okay, now what do you need to make this more user friendly for a producer? And then once we get that done, so we've got a we've got a, a lengthy list. I'm um, I'm hoping I'm hoping by the new year, by January 1st. I don't want to put any I don't want to put any um, you yeah, know, dates oh, on dates on paper, yeah, but yeah, because I've done it before where we've you know we did a soft launch with the old group on uh, December 21st, 2012, because it was the end of the Mayan calendar and I thought it was just cheeky. So we did a soft launch with that, and, but it was the old site. It wasn't the new one. And, uh, and I, and it just, it, it wasn't as good as it could be because it was quick. So I just want to, I wanted to let this thing build very organically. I don't, 
I'm I'm so far down the rabbit hole, it's cheaper just to keep going down. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep going down into Wonderland. I'm not going to I'm not uh, yeah, so no dates, no dates, but I mean anybody that goes onto the site fanbuilt.com, you'll see that from from where it started to where it is, there's a lot of changes that are constantly being made. Every day there's something new, we're tweaking something new and every week something quite large gets done. Every month we've shifted a, another paradigm. So it it can't be much longer now, but um yeah, no dates. We're just going to keep growing and when it when we look back when we look over our list and say okay anything else no okay let's push the button people can sign up for the beta now though it's an open yeah. beta correct yes it's an open beta just go in there create your avatar pre- create your profile page it's like facebook but it looks more like a carnival i really like demented carnival kind of steampunk environment that's kind of my it's my little yeah my, <laughs> my, my oc is my oc is probably a little steampunk well, my real life is steampunk, so, it's, so it's, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, they can go there it's at fanbuilt.com, F-A-N-B-U-I-L-T.com. Uh, go in, create your profile page. Say whether you're an artist or a writer or thing. And if you're a voice, if you're a voice actor, upload your demo reel. If you're a, if you're an artist, upload your pictures. Um, and we can, you know, link it to um, Deviant. Link it to. You, we have links to Twitter and Deviant and all that stuff. And forgive us if we're a little, we're still a little bit glitchy, but this is beta and that's what it is. And and the beta testers are great. Oh my gosh, um, Big Mac from Belgium. He's um, he's uh, one of our users and he is amazing. Uh, he's just been going in there and beating the snot out of our website, trying to break it, which is what I want them to do. Mm-hmm. And then to come back with lists of glitches that they found, and he's been just great. What would the readers of Derby Hoves News be able to look forward with their website? Why should they be interested in fan builds? Well, I'm not okay, I'm not gonna lie. There is a large contingency of my lovely bronies. <laughs> I mean, because I, I only announced it to two of the brony communities to, at, at the at two conventions. And I think a lot of a lot of them are are bronies. So you'll find a lot of your own kind there. And, um, and a lot of, a lot of, they're making a lot of fun things already. Um, when we, when we do the network, it's, we're going to have, each one is going to have our own channel. We have Transformer fans that are coming on board. We have Beast, Beast Wars fans. We have, um, of course, My Little Pony fans, uh, Star Wars fans. We've got, uh, Dragon Ball Kai fans. They are all going to have their own channel. So you'll be able to see, uh, a scrolling through of all of these short little bits of fun that all of the, all of the people that you know in your brony community they're going to have their own channel on the fan built network that just is like watching tv and we're gonna and we're pulling from we're, we're, well i can't really say what we're doing but, <laughs> yeah, but they'll well, because they'll have their own dedicated channel and it's not, and it's a visual channel and it's and it's done by by them so it's not just watching one group of people that have their own broadcast reporting on what's going on in the community which is what goes on out there which is great this is you tuning in on your ipad through the app which is free which is going to be free and clicking onto the fanbill network and, and and you go to the channel that says bronies and then you'll be able to just see scrolling like one minute at a time two minutes at a time maybe there's a three minute segment maybe there's just some pictures it'll be all things that the other fans the other bronies have made and that's kind of neat it's like it's like turning the camera back on them because they've they've been so supportive of me, which is great. Why don't I? So that's one, that's one of the reasons why I think they would want to tune in. Although already there's a large contingency of bronies on FanBuilt already, and there is going to be a channel dedicated to them, which is going to be all of their own work. So it's like seeing their, themselves in front of their community. How can people help support you and the website? Just please come and, and sign up uh, and tell other people to sign up because the success of a business in the first six months. Now, again, we have not launched. So that is six months from the start date of the launch. The, the success of any bit online business is you must have eyeballs on the site. If we have eyeballs on the site, if we can show that we have numbers then we can, and it's a freemium model. It doesn't cost anything. Then we can go to our advertisers 
and we and we're not going to be an all like fully advertising heavy stuff we're going to advertise only to the people that do like art things like microphones centiques um art programs things like that we're going to be doing those kinds of things um so if if we can get a large number of people on the site to show their support then i can go to the advertisers and charge them to be on our site i can go to schools who want to have programs and i can get them to charge to be on our site and then once we get that all of the money that we make the model that i've created is we're splitting it into three one has to go for overhead and staffing because i can't afford this forever and if the, we're going to need more staff as we grow and look for, and are going to need to go searching through more content the second is going to go for our contests because i don't want people to do this for free so they're going to we're going to have our own productions and a third is at contest anniversaries and third is so that we can actually invest back into other people's projects so we will be like a we we aim to be like a kickstarter in that way so this model that i've created is is trying to create a self-sustaining engine of economics within itself so that the group can keep going and support itself and eventually i can replace myself and because i have something else that i want to to work on next which is going to work in tandem with van build i need to create the engine and get the community there so that the money can come in and support the community itself so the money will go for staffing and van build bursaries and competitions and a kickstarter fund for people that we want to well, somebody's here at the door hang on a second <laughs> that's okay <laughs> i'm just doing an interview on step again I will uh, I'll come over in a bit. There we go. Sorry, that was my my lovely neighbor, John Taylor Sr. <laughs> well, he'll have a, a nice little cameo at the end, just depending yeah. on if I, I edit that out or not. <laughs> He's actually, if you go to FanBuilt, uh, if you go to FanBuilt and in the front part, if you go to testimonials, there's John Taylor Sr. standing right there, and he's a very silly actor. Oh. Uh. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I hope I've answered all your questions, and I want to I want to thank you for the opportunity to talk about fan builds. It's really that it's we're we're at a very crucial phase. So please, people, um, anybody that's in earshot of this, please tell other people. Go and tell even two other people, even one other person, and I'll be happy. But but sign up, come and play with us, show off your wares, and we'd like to we're, we we want to build a network so that we can show off your wares. And so the producers can come and find you. And and I think this is a good model. I talked to Lauren Faust on the phone for about two hours uh, before Christmas last year. And she said, after I've explained all of this, she said that she's heard of a couple other um, foundries that have tried this sort of thing. Uh, not in not to this degree, because this is kind of we're talking about a large scale event. Um, but she said that the, the model that I, the financial model that I've come up with, uh, this way of self-sustaining itself, <laughs> redundant, sorry, self-sustaining itself, <laughs> uh, is, is the best working model. And she thinks that it's going to work. And she said that she can't wait to see it up and going and coming from Lauren Faust. I mean, that's high praise indeed. That was all the questions I had here for you today. Did you have anything else that you wanted to leave the audience with? Um, mm, no, I mean, I, I, I think I've articulated myself to them. I, I've, I, I have, laid myself down in front of them in the in the prone position and said, please help me. So, <laughs> and I hope I've been mildly entertaining while I've been prattling on about all of my, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I never think that I'm very exciting. I think I'm kind of boring. So I never, I, I can't believe people actually want to hear what I'm doing, but, but thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you for listening, everybody. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming on and doing this, this with is, us today. And, and this is the strangest interview I've had with the Brony community because I have not done one voice from the show. I wouldn't ask that of Well, that's like, okay. I'm going to do one anyway. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. You're fabulous. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, and thank everybody else for listening, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.